A boy in the supermarket sneaks something into his bag. The father is watching out for him. This is not the first time they have done this. David, who had finished his job, took Ty and headed back. On the way, David finds a girl. This was not the first time he had met a girl. David took him home. The girl's name was Yuri. The five-year-old was skinny and miserable. Her body was covered in bruises. You can imagine what had happened to her. The family advised David to send her away quickly. It would be bad if the police found out. As a result, when Kiko and David were sending the girl back, they heard an argument coming from the girl's house. The woman inside shouted, I didn't want to give birth to her. Apparently, in this so-called family, Yuri was not well liked in this so-called family. Is it really the right thing to send her back? And so Yuri stayed. The next day the girl woke up and wet the bed. She apologizes repeatedly. But this time no one hit her. The family didn't have any real jobs. They live off their grandmother's pension. Yuri's arrival. Yuri's arrival made the family straits even worse. But everyone acquiesced to her presence. Dad David works as a temporary worker at a construction site. He also takes Ty to the supermarket to steal some household goods. Mom Kiko is a laundress. She occasionally takes items left in the clothes of customers. And sister Yao works as an escort court in a fancy store. This seems to be a very unreliable family. But Yuri lives here with peace of mind. During the day, Tai would take her out to steal things. In the evening, the family would gather around a hot pot. On this day, her father went out to work. When he came back, he was helped back by a worker. He had broken his leg. His salary was not much. Now he lost it completely. Without a job, David had to pick up his old job. He took Yuri and Tai to the fishing tackle store. He distracted the shopkeeper. Tai took the rods. Yuri also helped to unplug the alarm. But Tai doesn't like to take Yuri with him. In his mind, as a girl, Yuri is a burden. He didn't even want to think of Yuri as a sister. At night Yuri sits alone at the door, waiting for Tai who was late to come home. He is obviously a child who has been abused, but her heart is still soft. This touches Kiko very much. David decided to talk to Tai. He found Tai. But even though Tai accepted Yuri as his sister, but still refused to treat David as a father. But a family is still a family, no matter what brought the six people together. To meet is a very lucky thing in itself. But the peace didn't last long. The disappearance of Yuri was reported on TV. She was called Yuri by the reporters. She had been missing for more than two months. But her parents didn't care about him. They didn't even call the police. But the case still caught the attention of the police. Should the child be handed over? Or do they continue to hide it under the charge of abduction? This is a family that is on the edge of the law. They were hiding a child. In order not to be discovered by the police, they picked up the girl's hair and renamed her Ling Ling. Ya took Ling Ling to the mirror and showed her the new hairstyle. Tell her that she has another name too. Rika. That's also the name she had when she was an escort. Kiko and Grandma walking together. Looking at the two children. Kiko said it was better to choose her own parents. Grandma says it's a bond. Just like she chose Kiko. Kiko willingly. Being dragged down by her. They brought Ling Ling to buy new clothes. Actually. They stole. In the fitting room. The girl asked carefully. Won't she be beaten? Her mother also likes to buy her new dresses. But each time it was accompanied by a severe beating. At night Ling Ling pointed to the wound on Kiko's arm and asked. She said indifferently that it was from the iron. The girl held out her own arm with the exact same injury. Now she can only tell her it's okay. It's already healed. Although the body wound is healed. But what about the wounds in her heart? In the courtyard, they burned the clothes Ling Ling wore when she arrived, as if to say goodbye to the past. Kiko hugged Ling Ling. She said if she likes you. She said if she liked you. She should have hugged you like I did. At this moment, it was as if she could draw from this poor child. She could draw from this poor child what she had been missing in her life. The convenience store where Tai used to steal from. Ling Ling was not yet skilled enough to take a small toy. Just as the two were about to leave, the convenience store owner stopped them. Was he found out? He ended up handing Tai two jellies. <laughs> For the first time, Tai was ashamed of the skill he relied on for a living, had a sense of shame, and the family that was already struggling to keep it together, and the family that was already struggling to survive was hit by another blow. The laundry where Kiko works is being laid off. She and her colleague had to leave one of them, but the colleague told her about Ling Ling. In order to force Kiko to leave voluntarily, she has to agree. The good thing is that there is still a grandmother in the family. Every once in a while she, she would go to her ex-husband's son's house to pay respect 
respect to her former husband. In this way, this old man took revenge on, abandoned her husband, and in this home with which she, she had nothing to do with the house. But there is a picture of Yah. She is the eldest daughter of her ex-husband's son, and their youngest daughter is Kaori. It was obvious that Yah was also retaliating in her own way. Revenge on her biased parents and sister. They are obviously unrelated families, but they were all together. They would gather in the yard to watch the fireworks together. They would go to the beach together. David is serious about his fatherly responsibilities. He will prompt solved Ty's confusion in his formative years. But he was also teaching the children that everything in the store is unowned. Anyone can take it. He weakens the word steal to the extreme. But two children who do not yet know good from evil. Can they really grow up with David's values? Can they really grow up well? And how long can this family last? Grandma looks at the backs of everyone, like a happy family. She silently said thank you all. She said it twice in a row. The adults in this family are not good people. But even though they were working at the lowest level of the marketplace, but they still had a kindness in their hearts. But, how far can this support the family to move forward? This is a family of six unrelated people. This is a family of six unrelated people. Grandma died in the night. They were more worried about what to do with the body than they were about losing an old man who had been with them for years. They were more worried about what to do with the body. Cremation can be expensive. Finally, Kiko suggested burying Grandma in the pond in the yard. David told the children, Grandma never existed. There had always been only five of them in the house. The loss of this old man. It was like a wall. Suddenly the bottom layer of bricks was removed. Kiko Kiko went to the bank and took out all of grandma's money. They found her savings in the house. There was no sorrow for the old man's death. Ty watched it all. In the child's mind, he was probably sick of the indifference of the adults. David brought him to steal from the car. He was not as cooperative as he used to be. Instead, he asked David that time to save him. Was it also to steal something? Although David was vague about it. But Ty's heart. But it was as if a thorn had been inserted. And the closing of the store he used to go to. It was as if the Kiko's faith had suddenly collapsed. He went to the supermarket again. But Ling Ling came in too. Watching her clumsy theft. Ty deliberately drew the attention of the shopkeeper. And then grabbed a bag of insignificant oranges and ran away. To escape from the chase. Ty jumped from the bridge. As David and the others were preparing to escape. The police arrested them, and the deepest sordidness hidden in the family also surfaced. It turned out that David and Kiko were not their original names. They had been involved in a murder before. They killed Kiko's ex-husband. In the course of a theft, they picked up Ty who was left in the car by his parents, and later lived with his grandmother who was also abandoned by her family. They lived together, and the grandmother, at the funeral of her ex-husband, she persuaded Ty, who was neglected by her parents, to live with her. This is how the family came together. When the police asked David, why did he teach his children to steal? David said, he had no other skills to teach the child. In the end, Kiko took all the blame. Ty was sent to an orphanage, where he could get a real education, and Ling Ling was returned to his parents. But this time, mom was telling him to buy him a new dress. She learned to refuse. David lives alone in a new apartment. He took Ty fishing with him, eating coleslaw noodles together, building snowmen together, while lying in bed together. David finally confessed to Ty. He didn't want to save him at that time, just because he couldn't slip away. He could never be Ty's father again. When he was taking Ty to the bus, Ty confessed that he was caught on purpose, and Ty listened to David's shouting on the bus. One by one, the sound diminished. He slowly called out A. This movie is full of humanity and struggle. The line between good and evil is blurred. Kiko once asked, does giving birth to a child make her a natural mother? In her mind, they are not related by blood, but they are still a good family. But in the end, she still chose to confess Ty's origins. Blood is not a bond, neither can fostering. Stolen happiness does not last long. Love cannot heal all scars. There will still be pain here.